Banker Television, brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. Coldwell Banker, every day until it's sold. St. Croix Rod, the best rods on earth. Evan Rood, spend more time on the water. Welcome to Fishful Thinker. I'm Chad Lachance and I appreciate you joining us. Our guest on today's show, Mr. Steven Schweitzer. Good morning. This guy is the author of A Fly Fisher's Guide to Rocky Mountain National Park and that's a big hint to where we are today. We're in Rocky Mountain National Park. We're going to do some fly fishing for high country brook trout and cutthroat. Steve, what do you expect out of the day? Well, you can see some pocket water behind us. We'll be floating some high floating dry flies in this pocket water. Should have a lot of fun. Can't wait. This is going to be great. We got a genuine expert right here, strictly fly fishing today. It's going to be a fun show. Steve, let's get after him. All right, let's do Thanks. it. Thanks. Oh! <laughs> See if they're at the tail. I got him. Oh. <laughs> it's the quick landing method right there. <laughs> now these things are absolutely beautiful little brook trout. And as you can see, just picked them out of that pocket water on the dry fly. Got a little tiny royal wolf tied by Steve Schweitzer. Now the, the funny thing about this, we'll get him with a pair of forceps. We're going to catch lots of little tiny fish today. And I don't expect that we're going to catch any really big ones. Got that barbless fly. Beautiful colors on them, gorgeous little fish, little tiny fish. See you, buddy. One thing about these little brookies, they're not particularly selective. I've got a little royal wolf on it. It's a stimulator pattern. If you're trying to come out and catch some of the fish here in these streams like this, it's not really, generally really fly specific. So I've got a big fly, it floats real high in the water, easy to spot, got her done. We switched flies, I've got a parachute hopper, I've got a 5X tippet seven and a half foot leader with a 5x tippet on it and i'm fishing a five weight st croix uh probably could use as small as a three weight would you think yeah this is typical three weight water three weight water i don't have a three weight i need to call the boys <laughs> of st croix and get one so i brought my five weight but bottom line if you're coming to visit the park and you fly fish at all you probably have a five weight certainly it'll work yeah i think a five weight all around if you bring one rod is the way to go uh, especially if the wind kicks up yeah, we're watching Steve Fish here, he's picking on the pocket water. And it's really all about real short little casts, real short presentations. Uh, this is not long drift fishing at, at any level. And there you go, he's got himself a genuine giant brook trout right there. And that's beautiful stuff. Well, he took a little Adams, parachute Adams. He's a feisty guy. What you're uh, saying, Chad? Fight big, look small. Beautiful. Nice. Now that, that kind of fish right there, super plentiful, super easy to catch. If you're coming in town to visit, you're coming to Rocky Mountain National Park to visit, lots of those in here. Lots of them, uh, always, almost always cooperative. Here we are, uh, what is it? I guess it's the end of July. The river's running low and clear. There's people around. We're not in any real exotic spot, per se, uh, but definitely some fish to be caught. <laughs> How fun is that? Almost every single hole we get to, or little pool we get to, has got a fish in it. And, uh, and they're all little, and they're all beautiful. Well done, Mr. Schweitzer. Now, here's a little cutthroat. That's cut a nicer one there. That's a it's pretty a cut one. There Ooh, we go. Now that's pretty right there. What a beautiful little cutthroat. He's a squirmy guy too. Let's see if we can't get him back in the water. Now that's the, what kind of cutthroat is that, Steve? This is know? a Colorado River cutthroat. Colorado River cutthroat. So that's a, a beautiful fish. Now, the farther we get from hiking from people, the more of those we should run into. We're hiking out of the south side of the park. 
That's a pretty fish right there. See, yeah. buddy? And they, uh, they like uh, higher altitude water. So we're in higher altitude water. So the higher we get, the more we should see. I can tell we're in high altitude water because my legs are frozen from the knees <laughs> down at this point. <laughs> Steve, what do you think are some of the key flies? If a guy's just going to grab a handful, oh! Just missed one. <laughs> if a guy's going to grab a handful of fly, oh, great strike. That was beautiful. That fish came completely out of the water. I don't care if that's a little fish or not. That's exciting stuff right yeah, there. Yeah, he really wanted that guy. Uh, he, he came back it. twice I mean, for it. He literally, yeah, he missed him the first time, and he came completely out of the water to get it the second time. That fish was not going to miss that time. Beautiful. That's a gorgeous fish, Mr. Schweitzer. He may not be big, but, man, he's pretty. Yeah, the park don't make him any more beautiful than this. Nope. Let's get him right back in there. See you later, buddy. There he goes. He's happy. He's happy. <laughs> I'm happy. I spend a large percentage of my life around the water and under the sun. And as such, one of the most important pieces of equipment I carry on any given day is my hat. It seems very simple, but the reality of the situation is if you want to have good visibility, you need polarized glasses and you need a brim of a hat with a matted color underneath it to keep the sun out of your eyes. Whether you choose a baseball cap like I do, or perhaps a visor, or even a little bit fancier, wider brimmed hat to keep sun off your neck and your ears and your shoulders, a hat is one of the most important things to keep with you at all times around the water. Keep those UV out of your eyes and off your neck and you'll have a better outing every time you hit the water. Now, one thing you're gonna notice is Steve just did those power casts in a row. It's not because he's trying to get his fly in a hurry, he's drying it, is that correct? That's right, I want that fly to sit high on the water, and I'm trying to keep most of my leader off the water as well, so that that fly uh, drifts naturally like the rest of these bugs. Keep the uh, fly line off the water, and that'll help that fly. If you need to get up a little higher, that's a good, that's a good drift. I can't see the fly though. That's all right. Got him. Uh. Yep. There you go. There's my I didn't even see him take I it. Didn't he took right behind the rock. Tight. That's, That's all a it was. beautiful, beautiful brook. The line just pulled tight on it, and uh, and since I didn't figure, oh, that's a really nice trout. Yeah. Look at the colors on this thing. Holy Squirmy smokes. guy. Yeah. Hooked him right in the tip of the snoot. Well, we the uh, barbless fly. Oh, how look nice at that. Is that. Look how vibrant and dark oh, those colors are. I got absolutely. par marks on it. Yeah, that's a pretty fish. A little red and yellow. Here you go, buddy. Beautiful. Oh, that is good stuff. Now, couldn't see the fly at all. Just the line coming around the end of the rock. Stop drifting. Line pulled tight. I'm a line watcher. We talked whether jig fishing yeah. or anything. It doesn't matter what kind of fish you're doing. Watching your line will catch you fish. That one right there, that fish's demise was the line. Oh, that should get bit. Boom, it did get bit right when oh, I Oh, look! <laughs> look! I caught, I, my fly's bigger than this guy. Oh, man. Now this, I, I tell you what, this is, uh, this is fun. I would never <laughs> knock a fish that fits in my hand like that. That's an overachiever if there ever was one. Oh, it's just, it's so much fun. These I've guys are fun. I've got swim baits three times bigger than that for bass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So obviously we've had good success on the course of today and we're not done yet, but it's going well. Uh, a lot of the information, the techniques, the everything else that we've used today is in your book. Which, what else can folks find in your book? Yeah, I, I break down the park in about eight sections uh, and every piece of water that's been surveyed or known to have fish, I've been to and photographed and I've fished. And so I put my experiences in there and what flies or what techniques I think work well. I don't particularly spot uh, a location like fish this riffle, but I right. say hey, this stream has this type of fish in it or this lake will have this type of fish in it. And then uh, I, I cover techniques that we've used today, yep. some flies in the back and a little bit of history about the park. It's a pretty comprehensive, so if you're coming to visit, uh, maybe you haven't been in the park, this would be a great book to get. Yeah. Can we sell it at fishfulthinker.com? Absolutely. <laughs> you heard it right there. Steve's book, you want to come do what we're doing, that's the way to do it. So tell me what, uh, what patterns, let's say the guy's gonna walk in Sportsman's Warehouse, he just drove into town in his motorhome, he's gonna come to Rocky Mountain National Park, he's not a bug expert, he's not an entomologist, he just wants to go catch a few fish, what flies does he have to have? Give me five flies that he has to have. Well, I can just look at my box and tell you right now, because I carry them. 
So I carry a woolly bugger or a streamer. Which worked uh, for off, us already so far yeah, today. So when they're not rising, you, know, you want to go subsurface. I carry a, a hopper pattern, and in this case it's an LA ant, although it's called an ant, it is a hopper imitation. They must have big ants in LA. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll carry an ant pattern. Uh, those are much more difficult to see. Uh, so when you fish those, you look for the strike or the rise. Uh, ants uh, are blown into this water almost continuously throughout the day, especially on these, these uh, bank sides. Um, an attractor dry, like we were, we were uh, using earlier this morning. Like, like the a, humpy, a, a or, humpy the or royal wolf, exactly. Yeah. Um, let's see what else I have in here. And some elk hair caddis. Uh, oh, yeah, you know, that's a standard in Colorado. Yeah, we could anywhere, be throwing those right now. They look like really small hoppers. They look like caddis. Um, if you use a smaller size, 14 or maybe a 16 elk hair caddis, uh, it'll also, Boom. there's a nice take. Nice take. Did you get him? Yeah. Yeah, good yeah. job. Small guy. Surf he's that a wee guy little type. But you know, the funny thing about him is he's little, but he ate a pretty big fly. Yeah, they're and not it shy. It goes to show you how vicious he is. Boy, this is a little one. I'm surprised I got the hook set now. This one begs for a one weight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, come here, buddy. All right, now I wet my hand there, if you notice that. I try to make sure my hands are always wet before I touch any of these fish. The one reason that a trout is capable of holding in this water, and that's a beautiful little fish. See you, buddy. The one reason it's capable of holding in this water is, as you know, because of its slime coat. And that slime coat is so important for those fish because not only does it lubricate them, it gives them a chance to slick here and be hydrodynamic, it also protects them from infection should they get a wound or, or it protects them from bacteria getting into their into their bodies. So the slime coat's important. If you're going to use a net, a rubberized net would be key. We're not going to net anything because if I lose a fish today, it is not the end of the world. We talk about reading water and how important it is to trout fishing. It's to me what makes stream fishing easier in some ways than other types of fishing because you know where the fish are going to sit. Steve and I were just talking. He's an expert fly fisherman. I need more spin fishing. Either way, this outside seam or this outside run right here is going to be a key spot. It's where they have water depth. It's where they can sit along the bank. So my presentation here is going to be important to get it right along that bank. So I'm going to generate some line speed, get my line out of the water, and get it all the way up along that bank right there. And it's going to come right down that bank. And I'm going to hope, I mean, that's just a money drift right there. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Oh, he's under it. See him? Yeah, he, he, come out, he come up he underneath flashed. it. Yeah. yeah, he did. So a couple thoughts there. Um, if they are react or, uh, flashing at a big foam fly like this LA ant, um, that's telling me they're interested in something like that that's floating. But maybe it's a little too bright since we've got some orange on this fly. So I would go back to like a uh, elk hair caddis and drift that through there a couple times. And I bet you we'd pull up a fish. So you switched up to the Elk Air Caddis, and on the first try, textbook, he just finished telling us that maybe my fly was too bright and that we needed something more subtle. I made that same drift like, I don't know, at least six or seven times, and all I got was a refusal. He makes one cast after calling his shot. Let me come up there and see what you got there. Beautiful. That's a nice one, too. Yeah. Beautiful colors. Nice. And he ate that thing absolutely yeah. perfect. Nice catch. hanging on the inside seam. So let's just see if we can't get them right there. Now you can see, folks, when I'm talking about the inside seam, hopefully you can see this. There's a, there's a current swinging against the far bank. Where the current meets the far bank, there's a slower section of water. That's your outside seam. Your inside seam is where the shallow water breaks off into the deep water, and you'll get kind of a slack water area along the edge of that. That's your inside seam. Knowing those two allows you to observe and communicate. There you go. I got that one on the inside seam. That, uh, that allows you to communicate and, and put your pattern together. We always talk about pattern fishing. It doesn't matter whether you're trout fishing or you're bass fishing where they invented pattern fishing. We recognize they're feeding on the inside seam. We know what bug they'll hit. We know what drift they like. And then it's just a matter of putting it together. You still got to be able to execute. And that's where the fly rod keeps it interesting for most folks. Boom! And right off the bat, the same fish that swung at mine grabbed his. <laughs> so I, I, I purposely cast it on the inside seam. Now I'm going to go in the middle. And then I'll go on the far edge. Right, sure. Boom! That's a nice oh, take. 
Wow, this is a five weight, guys. Look at this. That's a nice this one. This is a right five there. weight, and this That's... fish is pulling it really well. Nice. Let's see what uh, what kind of fish we have here. <laughs> Looks like a brookie. Absolutely beautiful. Nice, great colors on them. Let's go ahead and let him get an air. What a beautiful fish. See you, buddy. Now let's talk about these one thing real quick. Now a lot of fly guys don't want to talk about eating fish, but the reality of the situation is what? Well, brook trout in the park are one of the most prolific fishes in the park, and there's pretty uh, lucrative um, harvest uh, options for brook trout in the park. So um, I can't recite them off the top of my head, but I know you can take six, eight, or ten of them somewhere in that range. Under and a certain size. Under a certain size, right, like I think eight inches. And it's not bad to do that because it helps thin out the population. Uh, oftentimes when you have the overpopulation of brookies, particularly not in this stream, but in some lakes in the park, uh, they'll get stunted. So their heads will get really big and their bodies are really small. And that's the symptom of a stunted fish. So it's yep. not a problem to take some fish out there. And I've done that yep. on occasion. If we were camping tonight, you bet we'd eat some of these. Yeah, yeah, they're tasty for <laughs> sure. Yeah, they'd be good. You see that one? See if you can get a drift by this tree right here. Boom, right oh, there. Oh my lord. <laughs> that guy was hungry. Yeah, that guy wanted your fly. I think yeah, he approved of your go. fly tying skills. That was beautiful. Now there's still another one even farther back down. Now this one's going to get bit right here. <laughs> <laughs> you called it, Chad. That's yeah, awesome. Well, when you, when you see him bite, now there's a wind piling up your cast. Now that's the, the thing in the afternoon. Did your bug just fall in? Yeah. Right along oh, the right there. Oh, he never even touched it though. It never pulled under. No, they're, they're, they are, they're looking at it and they're coming up and they're slapping at it. Oh, that, see, they're, these are. Uh, How many bites is that in that same hole, right? The same little spot. There yeah. you go. That's too good fit. Boom. There you go. There we go. <laughs> that, he's stuck. That is awesome. That is awesome, dude. I am telling you what. You know, this is summertime fishing in. Uh, summertime high country country. Oh, look how dark he is. That one should get bit. Got it. Got him. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. I don't care uh, what kind of fishing you like to do. That's good fun right there. Get down here and we'll check this fish out. Come here, buddy. Beautiful. Set the St. Croix down. Beautiful. Look at this colors. And we have caught fish in nearly every run we've gone to. Look at the colors on that one. Little blues, little reds as you tilt in various directions. Are those not pretty fish? Little brook trout, member of the char family. It's also a pretty big fly, so it's gonna wanna catch any type of wind it, it wants to latch onto. That's There's a good well, drift, right there you had it. You got, got it. you got it, you got it. Barely called it. Yeah. <laughs> Barely got the cast I needed and got him right off the bat. So, yeah. you know, one thing this has also proven is you don't have to be an expert fly fisherman. I mean, I've literally been fly fishing since I was about nine or 10, but I haven't concentrated on it as my sole passion like other folks have. And I'm, I'm competent, but I'm not an expert by any stretch. Now, this is a really pretty one right here. That's a, that's and, a bigger uh, fish, and, too. And we want to look at this one close here. Yeah. And there you go. You can see my fly right there. Absolutely beautiful fish. Great markings, great colors. Barbless, it'll come right out. Should come right out. It's through the upper lip, actually. So we're here in July. And uh, what other times besides July would you think would be a good time to be in the park? To catch fish? Well, ice off on the lakes typically is in the first part of June going in the middle of June, which is about the same time that snow uh, gets off most of the trails in the higher elevations. There you go. Perfect, perfect, perfect. <laughs> so you can literally fish this from the, the end of May uh, clear through the first of November. I've been up here even in, in the Thanksgiving time, but there are there's some ice on lakes and waters. So. In Thanksgiving, Oop, there you go. Yeah, Perfect. You've got uh, quite a big fly. fishing range, but uh, certainly not all the waters are open that whole range. The waters are typically open from June to about September. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, end of June, that is. And what's your absolute favorite time? I know this is a very productive time, but what's your absolute favorite time? Well, my absolute favorite time would probably be at the end of August going into September because we have caddis, we'll have ants, we have hoppers, we have beetles. It's just a smorgasbord for the fish. 
So can we come back with you in August or September? Why don't we do that? <laughs> I think we should come back and do a high mountain lake at that point. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be just fine. And those are in your book too, right? Absolutely. Another beautiful fish, one after the other. I mean, this, this is a great big barrel full of ducks. <laughs> And, uh, and I have the appropriate And the wind shotgun. is now kicking up. Yep, and that's why you start early. That's why we talked yeah. about you start early in the day. It's, it is, I mean, after all, it is high mountains. And there's always going to be wind in the afternoon, whether they be thermals or, or whatever. Uh, you know, there's always going to be a certain percentage of wind in the afternoon. There you go, nice catch. Cast, rather. And, uh -huh. yeah. Dribble that one back, give him another shot at it. There, there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that place is just loaded. With yeah, you think? <laughs> good stuff. Yeah, you brought us to a good spot, I'll say that. So, Steve, I think I just went uh, like five casts in a row and I'm going to fall in. <laughs> I think I just went like five casts in a row. And, uh, and I think that's as appropriate spot as any, complete with me fumbling, fumbling, stumbling. To call it quits on this show, we've caught fish and pretty much every run that should hold fish. Yeah. We've caught them on elk hair caddises, which were very natural looking. We've caught them on big, like LA ant attractors. Foam, foam flies. Foam bodied flies. We've caught them on, uh, caught a couple of, even on streamer, just to prove that we could. Great stuff. Yeah. All the information's in this guy's book right here. Fly Fisher's Guide to Rocky Mountain National Park. Steve Schweitzer. Thanks, Chad. Thanks very much. Thanks for loaning me your flies and putting <laughs> up with my fumbling casting. Thank you guys for watching Fishful Thinker. We appreciate it. Hope you've enjoyed this show. This is classic Colorado. We'll hope to see you next week. Oh, rookie move. Boom, oh! <laughs> <laughs> that happens to all of us, right? He refused at that time. There he got him. <laughs> yeah, nice fish. Nice job. Oh, he came off. <laughs> it was a nice fish. It, it was, was a nice, nice job. Glad to see him doing that because. <laughs> cut, cut. If a sure enough expert like him's getting tangled up, then I ah. feel too bad. <laughs>